joining us online today. I'm Betty and this is Jane. Hey, we got a happy audience here because we've got a wonderful doctor, Dr. Contreras. Uh, he's not contrary. He, he is just <laughs> Dr. Contreras. He is, he is a Mexican who has actually gone back to Mexico with the love of God throbbing in his heart. He said he got fed up with watching all the corruption here. So he went back to where I think they invented the corruption, back, <laughs> back to Mexico. But the deal is this man is full of the love of God. And he's an amazing, uh, to me, well, we all know that he has seen supernatural miracle healings. And many very highly visible and even wealthy people have taken their family to be with this doc because of the miracles. And uh, he just knows what helps us. And so he's, he's come here to share something that he's actually put in a book. He titled it, Look Younger and Live Longer. So, you know, he'd say, look, you know, young like Betty, not, not like James. That's probably, he could have put that down here. <laughs> that I look like I'm old enough to be her dad. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Well, but she, I'm only one month older than this lady. <laughs> so this is the miracle that Dr. Contreras is talking about right here. But what, he, what he's saying is that you can take 10 steps to reverse aging and you can live a vibrant life. And, and he really gives sound advice. Now, we talked in an earlier program, which you can go back and see online, uh, about diet and exercise. And it wasn't something, as a matter of fact, it was a fun time talking about it. But he was, he was giving us the real uh, truth that's revealed in the Word of God about what certain foods do to you. It wasn't like this was a religious custom and God put it on the people to see if they loved him enough to do it. No, the truth was, if you care about yourself enough, do these things and it's better for you. It'll give you health and a long life. So he explains that. But then he's going to talk about the spiritual aspects and other things in the book that we're going to talk about today so that we're looking at the whole picture. Would you welcome Dr. Contreras back <laughs> to life today? We're glad you're here for another program. Yeah, we'll see you all. And... Uh, yeah, you know, I made it another day, okay? So here we are. Okay, I, I want you to touch on the things, and you, I want you just to kind of take, like, here we are, we got a, a room full of people that are prospects for better health, uh, yes. understanding some things, and you want them to understand. You you said to me, as a matter of fact, you even said it before we actually came on the air, that, it, that if people would, would do certain things, that it would, it would totally eliminate m many of the health problems, yes. probably most of the health problems, and we wouldn't have the health crisis we've got Correct. because there's not enough medicine or money to deal with what we're causing to happen to our bodies. Is that true? Absolutely. So the only way you solve the problem is dealing with the issues and the cause of the illnesses yes. that are pulling the very life out of us yeah. and even killing us. So give us some The counsel. motivation of this book is that I, I, statistically, Christians are sicker than non-Christians. Mm -hmm. and, and I can't fathom that. Uh, and, and just an example, the highest incidence of cancer in the world is the USA of America. Wow. Wow. The USA, the United States of America. And it's probably, now it's a little bit, shaky, but it's probably the most Christian nation mm -hmm. in, in history and the nation that has studied the Bible the most. The lowest incidence of cancer in the world is China. Wow. Well, they're, pagan, they're, because they're so godly. A <laughs> pagan country. <laughs> yeah. But they follow without knowing biblical principles of health. Mm -hmm. While Americans, Christians, do not follow biblical principles of health. The, it's almost like they defy them. Yes. Mm -hmm. The uh, highest incidence of disease in professionals in America is pastors. Stress? Stress, um, not eating correctly, not exercising, uh, too many burdens, all of those things together. And, you know, when, and when you're burdened or you're depressed or you're heavy laden or you're worried, or even fearful, I think you medicate with food. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think it becomes that's a that's why we call it comfort. Yeah, yeah comfort, 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 comfort. A false yeah. sense of escape. Yes. I mean, it really is, you know, that they're not in drunkenness and partying nope, and uh, dissipation. Right. Somebody said uh, that in, in the world's crowd, you know, of partiers, and they looked at Christians and said, what do they do? What do they do? And the guy said, look at them eat. <laughs> what do <laughs> yeah. eat? Boy, they eat. I mean, it really yeah. is true. It, it's, we're, we seem to be out of control in the very things that should be probably pretty simple to control. Exactly. And that's the motivation of the book, that we as Christians should be a light, right? Mm -hmm. An example. A shining a light example. of health in, in, in the world. And, uh, and we can achieve it fairly easy. One of the biggest problems in America today is diabetes and obesity. Mm -hmm. Both of them have to do with our lifestyle. Yeah. And, and so by making really simple changes, doable changes, 
Um, you know, I don't want people to think that you have to do a diet so harsh that the first verse that comes to mind is for me to live as Christ and to die as gain. <laughs> that's, that's, that, that's not the verse that I want to, to, to come into your minds when you think about diet, because that's usually, oh, diet is the worst yeah. thing I can. Well, diet has such a negative right. sound to so it. You it's, know. It's, it's, it's a just new lifestyle, eating a new the way, way you know? God wants us yeah. to eat. And we are now basically consuming uh, food made by, uh, by uh, uh, industry, by the industry. We don't consume the food the way God put it on this earth. So that would be number one. And then uh, the proportions of foods that we need to eat. We're eating too much. We usually eat in breakfast all of the calories that would be sufficient for the rest of the day. That's right. Uh, and then we don't move. So all of, all of these things that are not complicated and they would take a, a little bit of effort but once you get into the hang of it, you can, you can lead a very, very healthy and productive life. Okay, I do pretty well on the things that I've learned to avoid. But I want you to tell me what happens. I've heard people say, like, if you eat red meat or something, it shouldn't maybe be a larger portion than maybe a, a tight clenched fist. It shouldn't be like that. I mean, you, you try to eat maybe six or eight ounces Correct. rather than 12 to 16 ounces. I mean, you try, and so cutting the portions down, that helps, right? Very, very and much. And then the, the colorful vegetables, and, and if most nearer not cooked is better, the more you can eat them in their natural state, the way the Lord just gave them to us. Uh, all that's better, and less salt. All that. We, th yes. Those are those are just kind of are kind those of the, the basic things. And if you if you follow that, you're going to reap the benefit of it uh, for many many years, added years to your life. Okay. Well, also, also we we've kind of got it in our minds. We eat three meals a day. Yes. If we yeah. ate smaller portions, then you'd ha eat some healthy things yes. in between. Keeps your metabolism up. Last right? month, a report was published by JAMA, the mm -hmm. Journal of the American, American Medical American Association, American. Mm -hmm. that women who fast for 13 hours, meaning you have dinner and eat nothing until breakfast. Yeah. What a concept. <laughs> well, yeah, but tell me about it. I mean, what does it do? 36% less breast cancer. Just wow. by, so you, just and by, you said, and, 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 and eating the worst dinner and the worst breakfast. They're not, they were not talking about healthy foods. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just the fact that you allowed your body to rest yeah. from those bad foods for 13 hours. Wow. wow. Reduce the incidence okay, of cancer by 36%. Okay, but now you're not, not cutting them some slack and say go eat junk just so you eat on this space. No, right? no, so <laughs> imagine oh, okay. if, if the dinner was healthy and the breakfast was healthy, yeah. then probably the incidence would drop by 80%. Yeah, okay, so and this is an amazing discovery, but let me ask you about this because I have noticed this, that if I eat the smaller portions, but then I'll eat between meals, maybe some almonds or maybe some fruit, and then, or just a really light snack, then your meal at noon, and then yep. maybe in the evening. And Betty and I seldom eat out at night, and we do not have a big meal at night. It'd be mm -hmm. almost a rare exception, even very highly visible people who really want to spend time with us. We just won't hardly go. We'll say, well, we can go somewhere and, and just yeah. talk. We'll go visit, but we don't want to go to a nice restaurant either because yes. we learn it's better for us. Well, okay? definitely. You don't rest as well exactly. when, you're, when you're so full. We don't. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, nobody. No, the no. truth is that nobody. Yeah. That's why they, they don't rest, because they have this very, very heavy... Okay, dinners. but I want to get my question answered here. <laughs> she doesn't normally cut in. You know, it shows me a curve. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm proud of you. Keep, uh, you told me. <laughs> yeah, I want you to. But, but um, what I'm saying is, is that business of... Because some of the skinniest people I know and the healthiest people, they seem like they're always eating. <laughs> But it's little, and so through the day, and, and one time I followed that pattern for a few days and lost a bunch of weight. Yes. And I said, I ate all day long. Okay, is there something to keeping the metabolism up but not putting too much in that can be beneficial or is this there, system? There is no question about that, that dividing the, your, your three meals into six with three light meals and two snacks are very good. Okay. But now we're finding out that fasting actually is a if very It was fasting as a portion thing. of the 24 hours. Yes. Not just a six or eight hours sleep. Exactly. But extending it. Extending like from, it. from the noon from, meal to the from, next No, 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 from dinner. At if, night? If you have, yeah, if you have dinner at six, Okay. And, and you eat breakfast until eight is fourteen hours. And you're saying that's that's good. <laughs> that's incredibly good. But I've good. been kind of doing that. What's wrong with me? <laughs> well, you well you don't have any diseases. <laughs> well, I got one. I, I, I'm dealing with type two diabetes, but I've done all the things they tell me to do, and it doesn't look like it shows up. But I try to keep doing things right. Here's what I notice: if I just have one of those sugar moments, 
You know, I think, I think sugar has demonic activity in it. <laughs> because sugar can talk to you from all over the house. Sugar I mean, you is... can drive by, you can see a sign. It's, it's just a most, it's powerful. Okay, so here's, here's what I found. That if, if I do, let's say, indulge, it's like I get sleepy. Yeah. I lose my energy. Is that, is that one of the effects? That's I'm, one of the help symptoms. Help me with this. I'm going to lay something in front of you now. Every now and then, because this used to be, this would be my regular meal. As a matter of fact, well, the first time years ago somebody talked to me, about you count calories? Well, the first day I counted the calories for an average day was 10,000. <laughs> and I had one of the highest metabolism rates anybody ever checked. I was like 4,000 calories a day as my norm. That's pretty good. Wow, right? that is that extremely was my, That was my normal, but I'm really yeah, pretty wound up, right, Betty? So, you know, Betty loses weight watching me. You know, so <laughs> and that's why she stays nice. But here's, here, here's what I found, that, that I gave up the chicken fried steak. And really, I gotta be a really godly guy one time. I went to chicken fried chicken. Oh. Rather than steak. It's a real step forward. Chicken real beef. I'm, I'm pro. Okay, now here it is in this cream gravy. You eat cream gravy, you've seen it, right? Yes. Good old, good old cream is all over it. Yeah, hey, and if you're smart, you get a cream gravy on you, but bring another cup on the side. You're gonna, you don't want any part of it not to be so. Now, I'll, I'll see that thing, right, baby? It's just so, it's so beautiful. I mean, it's like a, it's like a masterpiece. It looks like a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see? You want to see it that way, okay? But I mean, this thing is so weird. Just every now and then, I just indulge in this wonderful thing, and then I go home and pass out. Okay, what I'm asking is because I've told Betty, I said, okay, I did that. I had that deal. Remember me telling you this? Mm -hmm. And I weigh every day. You know, Betty, she don't want to see a scale. She don't know there's a scale. Not even she doesn't know. <laughs> she does not want. They all lie. Okay, but I weigh every day, and so I did this. Man, I lost about a half a pound. I said, man, it's progress. Oh. <laughs> so I started trying to justify this. Okay, now tell me, because I'm not doing it, by the way, I'm not doing it. Maybe like, maybe twice a year. Mm -hmm. get, get that, yes. do that, okay. What's that doing to me? Well, that is um, increasing the production of insulin in your body. And when we have an overflow- Is that what gets a high and low feeling? Exactly. When you have an overflow of insulin, your, your cells, the rest of the cells in your body are getting saturated with insulin and then it doesn't work. And that's why when you eat sugar, it's not metabolized and you get diabetes. Wow. So what you need to do is stop the intake of sugar to stop the production of insulin so that your actual insulin in your, in your cells get out there and leave. It take, it's a process that will take months. But you can reverse okay, diabetes. So by stopping to do, eat those things. Right. And, it, and exercise too. It, if you exercise, then you do it faster. Mm -hmm. And you um, really think most type two diabetes could be cured it's by just that simple way? All and of you it. deal with that here in the yes. book. In in simple terms. In simple in very simple terms. Okay, so were you saying to me that, that I must never ever have a chicken fried steak? No, again? no, if you have it twice a year, it's fine. Again, okay. I mentioned but, yesterday. But you're that telling me it has a, a negative regular. effect. It yeah. has a negative effect There's even no beer. question. Every yeah. time you do it, it's gonna have a negative effect. So that's what I'm probably but gonna, I'm if you get limit it, yeah. obviously yeah. it's the, the, the negative effect is also going to be so so the loss of energy or the reverse the, the getting groggy, your mind kind of shutting down. All then of that it, is because it, you're saturated with insulin mm -hmm. and insulin doesn't work anymore and, and doesn't get the, the, the uh, sugar metabolized. Okay, you've messed up the whole system the way yes. God designed it. Yes. Okay, so I don't want anybody watching right. to throw away their future. That's the reason you wrote the book. That is the reason. And I mean, and, I, I'm, I care about people. And it affects you not only physically, which is bad enough, but it affects you emotionally and spiritually. Your walk with the Lord is going to be impeded because of the things that you eat. Sugar is the most addictive substance on earth, yeah. much wow. more than heroin yeah. wow. or crack cocaine. Mm -hmm. We are virtually all addicted to Yeah, it doesn't have the noticeable immediate effect that those right. things have, yeah. the, the immediate change, but it's more addictive. Yes, and that's I, why, I don't know if you knew this, but they put sugar on cigarettes. Let me ask you this, sugar alcohol. It's uh, well, a substitute. It's the same. Same as sugar. It's the same as sugar. You really hurt my feelings, sir. <laughs> <laughs> the best substitute for sugar is, is uh, stevia. Stevia, yeah. yeah. well, I will we use stevia. That's yeah. completely natural. Yeah. Yeah. Zero glycemic index, yeah. that is, it has no impact on your, on your pancreas wow. to produce insulin, and zero calories. Lord, Lord give best. us all a desire for the stevia, yes. rather than the sugar. We can find it today. Yeah. Now, I want to say to all of you right here, here, here's help. Do you know how we ask you to help us help others? Do you know how often you hear me say, if you want your prayers answered, be an answer to somebody else's prayer? You Amen. know what I heard today? 
from the Lord. Now, th- I want you to think about this. Now, all of you here, think about this. I really believe this was just downloaded on me when I left lunch today that I had lunch with Dudley Hall, and we ate relatively healthy. And, and, and when I left, I said, if church leaders and church members would become an answer to Jesus' prayer in John 17, perhaps we would see our prayers for our nation's leaders and Congress answered. Does Amen. that make sense? Amen. Yes. If we have that relationship, so what I want to say to all of you, listen to me now, I love you like family. You say, if you knew me, you wouldn't like me. I might not like some ways, but I would love you. I would love you if you were in the pit of defeat and despair and addiction. I would do my best to lift you up. Just like I pulled my daddy up out of the gutter. I'm driving home from college and there's a man laying in the gutter. And I got over and it was my real father. Sot drunk alcoholic. Took him to our house. Had people help me. And sat him in a chair outside the house because I couldn't trust him to go in the house with my wife and my little girl. Picked him up. I love you no matter where you're laying or what you've done. But I want to help you get past that which holds you captive. And Jesus died and was raised to help you. The book is in the bookstores. You can get it online. Right now, what we're going to try to do, we're going to try to give some little children that have cleft palates, have terrible facial distortions, disfiguration. We're going to try to give them a smile. And we're going to try to put shoes, little shoes, on little feet that have ever had them. And what I want to ask you to do, now think about this. If you'd help us do that, and you say, would you mind sending me the book? Here's here's what I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to pray that God will put a desire in all of our hearts. If what God tells us, if it really is best for us, and that's all the Father who knows best tells us, let's ask God to give us really the willpower with his help to do these things. Father, I pray for many people right now who are listening to us who could just take this simple loving tip, this wise counsel, and apply it to their lives and add 10 years, not just 10 years of existing, but 10 years of meaningful, joy-filled life where they can see their little grandchildren grow up and maybe the great-grandchildren like Betty and I are seeing. Lord, I want that for our viewers because you want it. So let us be a blessing to them in Jesus' name. I pray God gives you the desire to make the changes that need to be made. Would you say thanks to Dr. Contreras? (laughs) What a blessing you are. Doc, we are... We're so excited about uh, letting our viewers uh, share what we call Christmas Shoes and Smiles. Now, we've got to really get a lot of help in a hurry because we want to give 150,000 little children shoes. And when you go and put little shoes like this on their feet and you bless that family, boy, you have blessed the Lord. Jesus said, you do it to them, you did it to me. You directly ministered to me, Jesus, when you did that. And Betty, if we can just bless so many mothers and little children, by putting these shoes on their feet. We want 150,000 kids to have shoes for Christmas this year. Absolutely. I hope you will join us and let's put some shoes on the feet of these precious children. And we've been there and we've handed them the shoes just as you saw. And one thing I noticed when I was over there is when we would put the shoes on the feet of the children, you look back and that mom's just smiling as (laughs) big as she can because like James says, she loves her children. She wants them to be healthy. She wants them to be able to, to run around and play without the danger of their feet getting infected and then going that infection going through their whole body, James. So join with us, if you will, and let's put some shoes on the feet of these children. And when you give children shoes and then the cleft palate surgeries, the smiles, it takes $500 for a surgery. We're asking you to pray about giving $1,000 for two surgeries for two little children. We're talking about shoes and smiles for Christmas. This is a gift that lasts them so long and doing it lasts for eternity. Thank you right now from the bottom of my heart for what you're led to do. Please make that call or go online. Thanks for doing it. Poverty is a killer, and because of it, children needlessly suffer, not only from a lack of food and clean water, but also from a lack of things we often take for granted, like a simple pair of shoes. Far too many children living in extreme poverty have never owned a new pair of shoes. And while that may seem minor in the light of all their needs, walking with bare feet puts them at risk of life-threatening infections and disease that could lead to crippling consequences and even death. 
By responding today, you can help immediately secure and begin shipping Christmas shoes to 150,000 children around the world. And for many, just in time for the holidays. Your gift of $36 will help provide 10 pairs of shoes. A gift of $72 will help provide 20 pairs. And a gift of $180 will help provide 50 pairs of Christmas shoes for children in need. As a thank you for your gift of support, be sure to request this beautifully crafted red crystal shoe ornament, a treasure to display at each Christmas. With your gift of $100 or more, you may request the Light Shines in Darkness Frosted Glass Candle, featuring a beautiful golden design with scripture from John 1.5. Finally, please consider a gift of $1,000 or more to help provide 275 pairs of shoes or two children with corrective cleft palate surgeries. And you may request the Bridge of Faith Canvas Print by Thomas Kincaid. Please call, write, or make your gift online today. Well, Betty and I just say in behalf of all these families and these precious children you are going to bless, thank you so much. If you help us bless those children and you'd like to have this book, we'll be glad to send it to you. You can get it online or you can go to a bookstore and get it. But uh, we'd like to help you with your health, with your life, with how you feel so you can enjoy life. Live longer, feel better while you're doing it. Do you all agree that what Dr. Contreras shared is important? Do you appreciate what he has shared? Doc, I really appreciate you. I think Thank we you. had a lot of fun with a serious subject. And I hope that you will take the advice. Again, thanks for watching. Encourage your friends to watch Life Today. Encourage them to share life every day.